You know, the greatest fear automakers probably have when they're reinventing, uh, I don't know why I'm doing this, just because it feels right. Um, the greatest fear that automakers must have when they're reinventing or redesigning uh, a next generation of one of their most popular and iconic products is that they're gonna screw it up for absolutely everybody. Perhaps that explains why Toyota took decades, more or less, <laughs> to redesign the Forerunner, which we've just seen, and this, the new Taco. This is the all new fourth generation Tacoma, and very more specifically, um, I am here to review and test drive the models with the big, small engine. And before I tell you more about that, as the dust moves around, as more Tacomas, you can see a smile on my face because I'm just having an incredibly awesome time. Um, this fourth generation Tacoma is, uh, in short, it's just absolutely brilliant because what Toyota had to do in order to maintain its lead and perhaps expand it, say, over the Ranger, over the Frontier and over... Uh, you know, other upcoming mid-size pickup trucks is, is, is keep their fan base, which eventually will have to get rid of their 30-year-old Tacoma, and they were probably waiting for this one, uh, but not only please their existing fans, but bring on new ones as they move away from some of the competition, such as the, as I mentioned, Frontier and even the new Ranger. Uh, by that, what I mean is that the DNA of this truck, of the Tacoma, is absolutely intact. Meaning that when you look at it, you immediately know that it is a Tacoma, just like the new 4Runner. It is unmistakably exactly what it is. And, and for that, some people may think that, you know, the evolution visually is a little timid. But the fact of the matter is that there's nothing timid about this. I mean, it, it's got all the attitude, it's got all the beefiness, everything has been built to purpose. And along with this new fourth generation, well, there's this version that comes on. And this is the one I'm going to focus on. This is the new Trail Hunter. Essentially the ultimate flagship top trim version of the Tacoma. All new for this fourth generation. And, and, and speaking of the, the flagship thing, if, if you think about it, the Tacoma is, to put it in, well, it doesn't make, no, that doesn't work. I was going to say it's the F-150 at Toyota. Well, it actually does apply because as people move away from the Camry, which was 15 years ago, you know, the measure of the midsize sedan and the Corolla, which was still is the measure of the compact sedan. I mean, as you know, we know everybody's going to a RAV4, but the RAV4 is not a flagship. It's not it's not a brand bearer. Well, it is, but oh, the hell with it. This is Toyota now. This is where all their efforts are focused, even more so than the Tundra, even though that is the full-size pickup. This is your volume pickup. This is your volume truck. This is the one that built the reputation of Toyota trucks, along with the 4Runner with which it shares a heck of a lot. I mean, it's the new TNGAF platform, which has been worked on extensively in order to make the Tacoma a Tacoma Plus, right, for this fourth generation. I'm, I, there's only one issue <clears throat> with the Tacoma and I'll tell you as we do a few laps of the new Tacoma and well okay I'll tell you now it's just bloody expensive but with this right the non that is a little bit more affordable but even so when I tell you what this retails for on the floor literally on the floor anyhow in the next few minutes and do those laps and then I'm going to focus solely on off-roading with this because, well, that's the type of event we're on. And, and believe me, you, that's not a problem at all. So uh, please hang in there. So as I was saying, uh, design-wise, it's just, it screams Tacoma. And it's, even in this, you know, top trim trail hunter, it's got a very, very familiar front end. Everything, I don't know what else to add other than it screams Tacoma. It screams Toyota truck. And it works in absolutely every possible and imaginable way especially in this trail hunter so this is the version we're going to get in canada which is going to be the only way to get the iForce with the six foot box which is somewhat a little unfortunate because i think a trd or even a limited with the six foot box would do absolute wonders for sales 
and there isn't I mean there's so much to talk about as far as design and the styling is concerned but at the same time there isn't I mean every trim has different wheels so these are the trail hunter wheels and then you have the obvious TRD wheels which are all 18s if I'm not mistaken there are a lot of features included once you move up to the iForce which is standard power tailgate which is a really nice feature um, and if you're looking how to put it back up well you can either reach for the handle or here's the magic button yeah how cool is that I love how it's integrated there and the tow hooks too are very different so there's a lot of air or B business like the tow hooks very very cool and the steel bumpers it's there's, they've thought of everything I mean you have your plugs in the bed as you would expect in one of these um, it's it's just oh yeah and the onboard compressor too once you step up to this version of the truck yeah I'm just I did stupid things because that's what I love doing right if I just go back to the front now I may mention the snorkel once again but uh, once you step up to the trail hunter you do get this snorkel let me zoom into it a little bit um, it's uh, it's it's functional and it's very enjoyable uh, on the inside I mean everything's been refined as you would expect in modern Toyota so yes all, all my stuff is in there but very comfortable seats unique piping and uh, contrast business going on for the trail hunter but essentially everything you see is what you'll get in every version it, it's it's still robust it's still rugged but what I do love and thank you Toyota you know what the only thing that's missing it's a handle handle on the A-pillar as you would get say in a Wrangler but okay so I'm parked like an idiot so that may not help and we're going to start it up so the hybrid so your 12.3 inch here 14 inches here I'm going to close the door hopefully it'll shut up but as with most Toyotas you get a series of you know physical buttons throughout and it just works wonderfully now here are your drive modes your crawl control the important stuff rear locking diff this I'm going to experience in a few moments uh, disconnecting sway bar which is fantastic I love the storage the basket the handle fit and finish is actually really nice and the materials are fantastic you have this little cubby hole here the door bins it's so rugged this is what I mean by Tacoma you know DNA enhanced and it just it's just spectacular it's just everything about it I'm, I'm blown away in every possible way yeah standard heated seats and once you get up to the Air Force if I'm not mistaken it's heated and cooled seats as standard as well I mean it, this is this is for those that are seeking lifestyle and truck stuff all rolled into one and, and by far this is the best Tacoma I don't know if it'll be the most reliable but things have been done for that I'm gonna stop talking about the what you can see and we're gonna go off-roading All right, so now I'm gonna work on the articulation. Well, I'm not working. The the Tacoma is, and um, here we go. So I'm gonna go into crawl, and then so right now I'm entering like a, a very very deep valley, if you will. Oh, look at this. Okay, it doesn't drive itself, but it almost feels like it does. Okay, maybe that's a little too slow. Yeah, let's take it up a little bit, and so I'm in three now, and I'm gonna go back down to one. Oh, yeah, you can feel like the suspension kind of compress in the back. <gasps> it's in, it's insane how it's just so smart and it's just working even in low going. I mean, you can never tell on the, on the camera, but I must be about 30 degrees on my side. And here we go. I am leveling out. RPMs are building. Oh, 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 oh. I don't think that was part of the plan, but I did not lock the rear diff and it's still working without the rear diff locked because the, the first round I did it and I locked the diff and there was nothing like this it never even struggled for half a second but that was a wonderful way to experience the difference between the rear locking diff on and off I'm just gonna keep crawling all right let's go into ah oh, it's instantaneous it's just fantastic I mean at the heart of this thing the trail hunter well the iForce Max 2.4 turbo four-cylinder engine with the with the electric motor wedged between the transmission and the and the uh, petrol engine is look the numbers are staggering it's 
326 horsepower and 465 pound feet of torque. The, the thing with this torque, I'm just gonna leave it in crawl because it's, oh, let's go, let's just accelerate a little bit. It, it's amazing how seamless and efficient it is. Now the engine, the power of this engine has, the problem, and I did mention that there was a problem, and I'll tell you another one. The problem is that you just want to use it so much, but you really shouldn't. But there's something that eggs you on, because if you're driving with the windows down, this one has the very sleek uh, snorkel along the A-pillar and the passenger side, and you can hear the turbo spooling up, and the intake noises, like the sucking sound, oh, it's addictive. It's just terrible. Um, I might as well tell, okay, so, about fuel economy. So if you want to understand the difference between the iForce Max, the hybrid, and the, just a 2.4 turbo, is this Toyota says you'll average about 10 liters per hundred kilometers in mixed driving, whereas it's about 12 uh, with just without the hybrid. But I'm thinking if you're going to be using the iForce Max for iForce Max reasons, which are not fuel efficiency, you'll never average 10 liters per hundred kilometers. At least I know I never will. I'll probably do worse than 12. But this thing is so good at absolutely everything. So yeah, the Trail Hunter Old Man Emu Suspension, which I just absolutely love the name. It's an Australian company. And um, I'm, I'm honestly, this is not the most hardcore off-roading that I've had the opportunity to do. I've done maybe a little, little bit more crazy stuff with a Wrangler and even with a Defender and a Discovery. Uh, but I mean, look, the, the Trail Hunter is designed for this. And, and the reason why the Trail Hunter exists is actually for overlanding enthusiasts. Now, as opposed to just buying a TRD Pro and modifying it with all kinds of other things, the, the Trail Hunter gives you a different, it's the same base, same idea, but is TRD is for going fast off-road-ish, whereas this is for doing more like this and being out in the, you know, the, the, I don't know, any desert or not jungle, but desert, driving at a slightly higher rate of speed. It, it's kind of, you know, spicy sauce and spicier sauce. And uh, speaking of spicier sauce, I mean, this thing is over $80,000. But you know what? Instead of having buyers or enthusiasts or lifestyle people just buying a TRD Pro and investing $15,000 in accessories and modifications and new suspension and all that, well, now you just start with this. You have a full factory warranty. So you don't have much to worry about. So you're going to invest less in your Tacoma I, I don't know, the, 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 no, I do know. The, the Tacoma, the same with the new 4Runner. Toyota has done exactly what needed to be done, which is improve on what needed to be improved on, which was the tech and, and the powertrain, but leave everything else well enough alone unless it needed slight improving because the, a, the ADN, well, French, a, DNA is intact. It feels and looks like a Tacoma and talking with an engineer a little earlier I mean they've still built this in order for it to last 30 even 40 years I mean maybe not in Quebec or Ontario but seeing a 90s or even an 80s Toyota pickup or, or a Tacoma is not unusual and this and this brings up an interesting point because it was a question I was asked about the reliability of the 2.4 over any V6 in the previous models um, it's been designed ground up to be a turbocharged engine. So it's not just a block and a head that got a turbocharged installed on the exhaust manifold. No, this is designed to do what it's going to do for hundreds of thousands of kilometers or miles or whatever. So I don't know. Toyota has done absolutely everything right. It looks extraordinary. Um, it's priced out of this world, but people are willing to pay that kind of money. So why would Toyota not take advantage of that? I'm going way too slow and just charge the full amount because people will buy. I, I absolutely love this thing. It's, um, it, I, I love it as much as I thought I would, maybe even a little bit more. Uh, and the, the iForce, everything. In fact, it's just a full, complete, brilliant package. I love every ounce of it, except for the price, but that's because I'm a poor auto journalist and I'll never be able to afford a vehicle like this, not even used. I have no hope of ever owning one. And that is it.